Hi, friends, fans, and superstars of Nadia Shaw. Welcome to this channel and welcome to this video. My name is The Anointer and thank you very much, Nadia, for having me in this illustrious space that you have created. Can we please all give some gratitude to Nadia for creating this slipstream of high frequency energy that is based on her personal energy, which I very much respect. And I'm so delighted to be here and to share how I see things. So I see shadow, I psychically see shadow. And therefore you can say that I have a unique view on the healing journey and even why humans are on earth. So I wanted to give you my view so that you could perhaps see what you do in your life and taking in the astrology and your intuition into account when you are your guide on your own healing journey. You know, if you're on this channel, I know that you're smart. I know that you're healing. I know that you care about astrology and intuition, and you also care about Nadia's inner and outer beauty. You have some sort of appreciation for truth with a capital T. So let me tell you my take on some of these things. So I personally see and feel vibrations. So you can say that there's something like, let's just say there's a vibrational scale something I made up. It doesn't exist, but let's just say, and let's say it looks something like this. So let's say when you're at a 10, you're at your highest vibrational self. You wouldn't change a thing about your life. You are in your true purpose. And um, I'll say that you are the true frequency that you are, what you came on earth to be. And if you're one, I think we've all been there at some point in our lives. Um, you probably don't want to be here anymore. So this scale doesn't exist, but it helps us understand what I'm about to talk about. So in my opinion, based on what I've seen, psychically seen, so many people have a true frequency to themselves that is unique and God-like. So let's just say that your true self is God-like. Let's just say you're like a God on Olympus who decided to come down to earth to have one rotation as a human. You just wanted to see what it felt like because you're, you know, curious. So let's just say your your true self, you, you're at a vibration 10. There's no way to get higher. That you can say it's your cosmic self. Some people might want to think of it as your higher self. You know, whatever resonates with you. But to me, I think of it as your true self, your true essence. And what I see is that everyone is really individual. Um, they came here to be that thing, but in order to be that thing, you actually had to be embodied. And when you got embodied, then you got embodied into something that was not 10. <laughs> let's just say your family and society, let's just pretend it's four. It's not going to be four, but let's just pretend it's four. And, you know, there was some kind of trauma. There was a lot of trauma when you're born. And there's some sort of additional trauma where, you know, no matter how supportive or unsupportive your family was, your personal family, most likely whatever you were born into did not reflect your true self, not as I see it. Uh, they probably protected you and fed you and clothed you and did all these kinds of things, right? And this kind of functions at its level. But most likely, if you are at the same vibration as the family and society you were born into, you feel kind of uncomfortable. And a lot of people who are adults on a healing journey, they feel as if they're not in their full power. So what does that mean, you know? And to me, that means that in order to fit into your family and society, you adopted your false self or your ego, you can say. And you had to drop, let's just pretend, six vibrational points from your God-like self you know, the, the God on Olympus who came down to earth incarnating into being a human had the rude awakening of what it feels like to be a human. Sometimes I use the example of, you know, let's just say you're God on Olympus, you incarnate, you're on earth and you turn out to be a beggar <laughs> and your life feels like that. Even if you're not technically a beggar as you're watching this, sometimes you can feel like that, right? And like life feels as if people are just on the street, you know, slapping you on the face with a dead fish. You know, it can feel like that. It's not necessarily true, but it can feel like that. And what I would say is that actually, if you're the God on the Olympus, that difference in feeling can feel really, really exciting. <laughs> it's very delicious because it's very different than what you're used to. You're used to um, 
not these kinds of feelings, especially the, let's say, low, lower vibrational feelings, feelings of, let's say, shame or um, disgust, even. Those are very human kinds of feelings. So this is, again, I see shadow. I psychically see shadow. So this is my view of shadow. So that difference of six points from your true self to what I call your false self, this person being the one who is slapped on the face with a fish, that difference is shadow. So shadow is your truth. It is absolutely true, but it is something that your ego is unaware of. And in fact, to become aware of shadow, there needs to be some sort of ego death. Because as you can see, your ego feels true to the vibration that you're at. But if you wanna go higher in vibration and go closer to your true self, which you can argue is either the hero's journey, that is your hero's journey, or your spiritual mission, if you believe in that. Um, and you can see it as your healing journey as well. They all intersect. So to me, shadow is who you actually are. And for most of us, it's in our unconscious, right? So we access it in shamanic journeys. We access it when we're dreaming. We access it in those moments where we're actually not thinking. So to me, I'm firmly rooted in intuition um, as opposed to the mind. And a lot of the tools we have available in society today dissect the mind up the wazoo. So there's a lot of information about the mind, but not so much information about intuition. Isn't that interesting? So to me, uh, if you are doing something called shadow work, then what you are doing is a series of ego deaths and rebirths. What does that mean? What does that look like? Well, to me, it looks like you went from your old vibration to a new vibration. That was an ego death and rebirth. And uh, you could say that the old you died and the new you was born again uh, with more of your shadow incorporated, but this is still not your true self, right? You're still on the path there. And on top of that, it's incremental. You don't die at four and get reborn at 10. That's just not how it works. You know, we don't want the story to finish in the next page right after we started. We like to have a journey. So to me, this is why there's like a series of deaths and rebirths that Perhaps we go up to 10 and we remember who we are. I think you understand what I'm talking about. There's some sort of resonance with life. If you're that God on Olympus, there's some sort of resonance, like certain TV shows resonate with you, certain messages resonate with you. Deep down inside, you have some kind of truth that the universe reflects back to you, right? So just another drawing, another visual. Old ego, new ego death from four, rebirth at five, and that much closer to your true self. And as you're doing this journey of a series of deaths and rebirths, which is either your healing journey, your spiritual mission, and your hero's journey. If you're familiar with Joseph Campbell's work, you understand that the death and rebirth is necessary in the midpoint of the hero's journey in order for the hero to have more clarity. And it can look in a movie, like Indiana Jones is drowning in the river and you're like, oh no, I think he's dead <laughs> because he's underwater for a really long time. And then he punches his hand above the water and you're like, oh my God, he's alive. And after that, he can finally read the map. He has more clarity. He can finally read the map. Maybe you have to fold it a certain way and add a new dimension or you know, he just somehow gets it. He seems kind of like smarter and he is more on track with his spiritual mission, you could say. And to me, that clarity is because you went up in vibration. Does that make sense? Okay, so guess what? Your true self is always there guiding you on this journey of yours. It's really exciting. You know what? You know what this is for me? Your true self guiding you? It's your inner guide. It's your inner mentor. It is the Morpheus to your Neo on your hero's journey. If you're familiar with Joseph Campbell's work, you also know that when you go on a hero's journey, you have mentors and guides along the way. And in my opinion, your true self is your inner guide, also known as intuition. 
So to me, intuition is your highest vibrational outcome. It is the wisdom of your true self who will always guide you to the best possible path for you if you want to go back to your true self. It's like the God on Olympus being the beggar on the street, hit on the face with the fish, and little by little by little realizing, oh my goodness, <laughs> God on Olympus. I remember, you know, my power never disappeared. I just hid it from myself to have this fun, this journey, right? Where ultimately many journeys, one consciousness, correct? So in my opinion, how does this relate to everything and the slipstream of this channel? Well, to me, your true self is like your cosmic self. It is up there with math. It is up there with beauty. It is up there with astrology. It's also very, very closely aligned with mythology, right? All of these things and your unconscious self, symbolic meanings of life, they have some sort of intercorrelation because to me, astrology is the wisdom of the universe. And what I think is really exciting is we are many different people and we have therefore many different journeys and or spiritual missions. We're very individual, right? And that's where boundaries come into play. So my definition of boundaries is your highest vibrational outcome. So if you're in your boundaries, you know, if an orchid is in her boundaries, then she has a certain amount of nutrition, soil, air, water, humidity, shade, et cetera, right? And if she's surrounded by orchids of her vibration, she's gonna be really happy. So that is an orchid in her boundaries. And if she's outside of her boundaries, it's very clear. What I think is really interesting really interesting is that astrology applies to every single human on earth. You can't escape it. Can you escape your intuition? Yes. Most people ignore it. Most people can't access their intuition because it's a little bit scary. You know why? Because if you access your intuition, guess what happens? Ego, death, and rebirth. <laughs> you find your power again. And, you know, I would say ontologically, philosophically, you're like that much closer to the end of your story. You know, it's almost more fun for the story to never end. And I think that is why some people actually unconsciously prefer to not heal, believe it or not, because then they can like push away the end forever, kind of like a kid. They don't want the story to end. Or so when it ends, they just ask for the story to be read again from scratch. You know, you just don't want the fun to end. So I do think that everyone has access to their intuition. It is a universal quality of being human uh, because everyone has a true self. And if you have, let's say, difficulty accessing your intuition, you're probably thinking a lot, you're in your mind and uh, the vibration of wherever you're at, whatever thinking is true to that vibration probably feels right to you. You know, it feels right to you in some kind of way. And in many ways, um, therefore, your intuition might feel contra to something that feels right to you, something that feels right to your ego. A lot of people say something that makes them feel safe. So a lot of times, if you listen to your intuition, you have to have some kind of courage because it will guide you on a path that takes you away from who you think you are and towards who you really are. And since intuition is the inner guide, the inner mentor, and it can be ignored, this is what I love about this reality. You can't ignore astrology. You can't, you feel it, right? I personally feel things like sometimes a month before Nadia tells me what's going on. <laughs> and then when she clarifies for me, I'm so grateful because I'm like, oh, okay, now I get it. Now I understand why I felt so weird or I felt so good or whatever. And, you know, sometimes we feel weird and sometimes we feel, we feel really good. And no matter what, that is you being the orchid, getting the universe's guidance. You're getting that perfect dose of water. You're getting that perfect dose of nutrition. You're getting that perfect, whatever you need. The universe will always put you in your boundaries, the boundaries of you being on your spiritual path and you can't ignore it. And so the universe and astrology 
is the outer mentor, the outer guide that helps you on your path back to your true self to remember who you are again. Um, and I think you probably know that when you work against the astrology, uh, you're only shooting your own self in the foot. It kind, it kind of, um, it doesn't really work that way. <laughs> so in my opinion, to surrender to the astrology, to allow it to guide you, then it's really helpful to be in your intuition. It's really helpful to not be in your mind and to listen to the inner guide who has its counterpart outside of you, the outer guide. They're pretty much the same thing, but in different form. Just like you and I are pretty much the same thing, but in different form. And I wanted to share this view I have of the world with you because I know that you're doing something if you're here. If you resonate with Nadia, you are doing something. And I wanted to give you some kind of context that comes from my point of view, which you can take or leave, that might help you guide yourself a little bit better with a little bit more context. So thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Nadia. All right, see you next time.